What you looking for? We got what you looking for. What you looking for? We got what you looking for. Don't be shocked. You're shocked? You're shocked? I have questions. I have questions. What do y'all do for a living? I'm re-recording because obviously TikTok don't want me or y'all to be great. So once again, I'm a traveling certified surgical technologist. So this operating room right here, that's my office. I specialize in cardiac, vascular, and transplant surgeries. So I deal with blood, organs, a lot of instruments and supplies on a daily basis. I'm pretty much your surgeon's right-hand woman. To get into this field, you have two routes. Get an associate's degree and finish school in two years or join a diploma program and finish in about 15 months, which is what I did. After about one to two years of experience, that's where the big bucks come in. I signed up with a traveling agency and now I get to choose what state and what city I want to work in every three months. If you don't want to leave the city and state that you're in, there's also local contracts. And essentially, since I work whenever I want to, after every contract, I take a big ass vacation. Oh, I'm just between me and you as a traveler, easy 70K. Attention black girl luxury ticket. Hey y'all, so a lot of y'all been asking um what job title and it's a cardiac sonographer. Ladies, get into it. So what do I actually do for work? That is a great question. So as some of you may know, I moved into the tech consulting space almost six months ago now from working at a big tech firm. Um, but largely I still am in a cloud solution architect role. For those of you who have been in consulting or have experience working in it, you'll know that usually you do wear multiple hats and that has definitely been my experience so far. So largely I'm still a cloud solution architect, but I've been doing multiple other kind of tasks aligned to me. I'm now at a much senior level, I'm a manager role. And so that comes with a lot more responsibility. But I'm focused still on the cloud computing space, of course, uh, specifically looking at kind of software as a service implementation projects where we're looking at how businesses can use things like low code, no code applications to improve their processes and yeah, make the most out of what investments they might already have. Like I said, I do a lot of different things, but at the heart of the cloud solution architect role, it's really focusing on how exactly you should design and build on the cloud. All that work and what did it get me? Why did I do it? God, I wish I started when I was younger. I go, well, yeah, but you didn't. So shut the fuck up and let's <laughs> right. keep going. five things I would never do as a black female cardiologist. My mom loves to use the salt shaker and I do my best to avoid adding salt to my diet because that is one way to cause hypertension that leads to heart disease, especially amongst blacks in the United States. I never weigh myself. I just pay attention to how my clothes fit in order to help me maintain a healthy weight and avoid obesity. I never drink soda. Okay, well, maybe once during holidays. And the main reason is because of the weight gain that comes with drinking soda. So much sugar in soda will increase the risk of weight gain and obesity. I never smoke, and I know that none of my colleagues ever smoke. We all know the risks that come with smoking. Even as a physician, I would never change my medications without speaking with my doctor first. It's particularly important to get my doctor involved in making sure that I am on the right medication to help manage my health.
What's happening? 100%. And yeah. what gave you the confidence? Um, delusion. <laughs> I'm a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner and the owner of Mind Body Soul Psychiatry. And how much money do you make here as a nurse practitioner? I make 600000 Wow. And how long have you been doing this for? 10 years. <laughs> and what type of education or degree do you have to become a nurse practitioner? I did four years undergrad and then two and a half years of master's program. And how are you doing so well as a nurse practitioner? What is it exactly that you do? So I started a private practice. I was working inpatient, and I didn't really um, feel like the setting was conducive to people healing. You know, I feel like people need to exercise, eat well, have a lifestyle overhaul, and so I decided to go into private practice outpatient. Now, what do you enjoy about doing private practice instead of working at a regular hospital? I get to do things that are different. I feel like sometimes hospitals are, you know, they're very um, opposed to change and transformation, and I feel like I'm able to just do things the way that I feel clients would best have um, optimal results. And then what was that biggest fear that you had taking that leap of faith to starting your own practice? Were you scared at any moment? I was definitely scared. I tried to reach out to other nurse practitioners. Nobody was really like starting private practices. Um, I did go to social media and I did connect with some nurse practitioners that were like not in New York mm -hmm. and they were really, really helpful in just guiding the way. Okay, and then what would be your best advice you want to give to someone that wants to become a nurse practitioner like yourself? <laughs> I would say definitely do it. There's a lot of people that are going into psychiatry, but I would say don't do it for the money because it is extremely stressful. You have to be able to say, hey, this is a huge responsibility. It's a lifestyle overhaul. Let me make sure that I'm exercising, eating well, so that I'm showing up as my best self for my patients. surgeon of course when people find out they say that must have taken a long time yeah four years of undergrad four years of medical school and seven years of residency to be exact I'm a plastic surgeon of course I'm gonna to want to take pictures of all of my work okay I'm a plastic surgeon of course my favorite element on the periodic table is silicone I'm a mommy plastic surgeon, so of course I understand the changes that our bodies go through and can relate to my female patients and know exactly what they want out of their mommy makeovers. I'm a plastic surgeon living in Texas. Por supuesto que estoy aprendiendo español para poder hablar con mis pacientes latinos. I'm a plastic surgeon. Of course everyone I meet wants to show me their boobs. I'm a nurse practitioner. And how much money do you make per as a nurse practitioner? Um, right now, at the level I am, about $150,000 a year. And how many years of experience do you have as a nurse practitioner or in the medical field? 10 years. Okay. But 30 years overall, nurse practitioner, 10 years. Okay. And what made you want to get into this? Tell us your story, your journey. Well, first of all, when I was a little girl, I spent a lot of time in the hospital with my grandmother. She was administrative assistant for a lot of doctors, like chief of ophthalmology and neurology, mm -hmm. and just being in that space. And I was a science and math geek, so I just naturally fit into the space, and I always wanted to help people. And so even though I'm a nurse practitioner, I always think of myself as a coach, a cheerleader. I'm just like helping people to live their best lives. I just happen to do it in that space. Now, why do you enjoy helping people, though? What is it that drives you? When you help people, you actually get more than you give. It's just a sense of peace and satisfaction that you're giving something back to the world. And so that's what I'm really passionate about. I want to make the world a better place, one person at a time, one lesson at a time, one whatever visit at a time. Just make the better world a better place. And the last question, what would be your best advice you want to give to someone that wants to pursue the medical field right now? 
Um, study real hard, get your math and your science down pat. Um, really try to learn how to interact with people, build up your people skills, and so it becomes really natural and organic so people can feel comfortable. Because the most important part of what I do is being a good listener and being a good people person. So I can really pay attention and listen to not only what they say, but what they don't say, so I can better serve them. Did really? you smoke this morning? Please don't bother me. Did you smoke this morning? Me? Yeah. La. No? Because Gary, Baba Booey, you know, he thought you smoked weed. He thought you smelled like weed. Me? Nah, I don't yeah. smoke weed. Yeah, I mean, you know weed. I is hate weed. And what gave you the confidence? Um, delusion. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. Today, I saw my first patient as a first year student. Of course, it's too early to start doing anything invasive, but I did do an intraoral and extraoral exam and we did a little bit of treatment planning. Having that patient interaction was honestly what I needed to just remind me of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Sometimes in the midst of all these exams and stress, we forget why we're here. And there's something about bringing a smile to someone else's face that just makes your struggles a little bit bearable, you know? since I received my private equity job offer and I know for sure this girl in the video has no clue what she just signed up for. So far of the many things I've learned, one is that learning is not an easy process. What can be even more challenging is receiving continuous feedback, especially if you're a bit of a perfectionist. I mean, why can't I just be good at the start? Why can't I just know how to do things already? Is that too much to ask? Apparently it is. So in an effort to preserve my self-confidence or what's left of it, I've had to realize that though it may feel like it, feedback is not an attack on self, but a mere analysis of the work I've produced. But then I'd counter that argument with, is my work an extension of me? It's always been. Why should this time be any different? Well, maybe because you've literally never done the things you're doing now. So give yourself grace. Come to work with me at the airport as a cybersecurity engineer. Our job today was to walk the airport and basically check to see if there were any open areas where you could plug in your device because you know what you common folks like to do. I had no idea the airport was over three miles long and I wore these boots that I had no business wearing. But then we finally sat down and we had lunch and let me tell y'all, this was like in terminal C and we have to walk all the way back to the office so that's past terminal A to get back y'all my feet were killing me by the time I was done Um, so I'll definitely say one of the questions I get asked the most is how did I get into this industry, which is obviously finance, um, like what routes I took. So I'm just going to give you an overview on um, what I did to get into the industry, how I got into it. So it was about, I've been working in the industry, like I said, for about five, six years, five and a half years. I started in 2016 um, at the age of 18 and I did an apprenticeship so I didn't actually go to university um, I didn't go do a master's in finance I didn't go and study at this moment because I don't have a master's degree I don't have any degree um, I just came straight from college and I didn't actually do well in college either so I I don't know you guys know A1, A2 so I didn't pass A1 so I restarted 
and again I didn't pass A1 so I decided to just drop out of college and be like you know I could have gone to A2 and we sat my A1 exam and I was like you know what it's just not working out like let me just drop out just figure out life you know do whatever so after that I went to go do an apprenticeship it wasn't straight away it was a couple months um, of me just kind of like chilling working so I was working behind a bar at this time and then I went to an apprenticeship college um, and then did like a business admin course for three months and then after that I did an internship at IBM through the apprenticeship college and then from there I got my apprenticeship at a hedge fund at the age of head hedge fund at the age of 18 um, yeah, I started, like, I started May 2016, so that's how I got into the industry, and I've just kind of been in it ever since. You really do need to live in your purpose and in your gift because someone else's destiny is actually tied to you becoming who you are. If you weren't you, there's someone else two, three, five, ten years down the line who can't become who they need to become, right? I think about like all the women I've looked up to, all the people I've looked up to, and had it not been for this person or that person, like I just would not be who I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so on days where you feel like you can't do it or you're tired or you know X, Y, and Z, like rest, but also know that it's not for you. Your gift isn't mm -hmm. for you and like someone else's whole destiny, like take that, that's deep. Mm -hmm. Someone else's whole destiny is tied to you being who you are. I wanna know one of the main reasons why anesthesiologists make good money? Cause we work a lot. Yeah, I'm on call, and so far I have done a case with an orthopedic surgeon, a vascular surgeon, an ob getting ready to do a case with a general surgeon, and of course, on top of all that, I'm on call for epidurals with labor and delivery and, you know, difficult intubations. So, yeah, we work a lot. All those surgeons, they come in, they see their patients, they take them to the OR, they get to go home. And we are still here. We as in me and my anesthesia team, my CRNA, and I have a student. So yeah, we work a lot. Ain't no easy money over here, y'all. <laughs> so you better pay me my damn money. So I start off every day with Starbucks. Once I've had my caffeine fix, I make my way into the office. I drive into the office every day because I like being in my own space. I find it very therapeutic and I find that public transport in the mornings can be bad vibes sometimes. So I finally arrive at Canary Wharf and it's a lovely sunny day today, which has put me in a very good mood. I get to the office car park and I tap my way in so I can park my car for the day. This is my outfit for the day. I've gone for something very simple as I'm in client meetings for most of the day. I always spend the first part of my day planning and preparing for my meetings. I I'm now in the West End on the way to my client's offices where I spend the day with one of my clients who's looking to IPO. I pick up a super late lunch on the way back to the office. I'm having a very simple chicken and sweet potato salad. I then do some more work and find an hour to go to the gym. I always start off with a Stairmaster. I then make my way back to the desk and I do some more work before having dinner. Today I'm having Chipotle. I finish up some more work and then I finally call it a day before driving home for the evening. My total comp is 275000 a year, Amazing. and I work 100% remote. My name's Simone. I work as a senior federal technical account manager mm -hmm. at a cybersecurity GovTech startup. I help all of our government customers install our cybersecurity product, make sure they're getting a lot of value from it, yeah. and they just make sure their systems are secure. Can you break out the total comp yeah. based on like base and stocks and all that stuff? So base salary is one seventy five, so <laughs> nice base. Yeah. And then my bonuses is about 30000 a year, nice. and then the rest of that is all stocks. So we're pre-IPO company. What got you interested in this field? I grew up playing basketball and okay. I basically got into the field because I needed something to do mm -hmm. outside of basketball yeah. and I was trying to honestly figure out a way to like not have to go to my regular classes. <laughs> yeah. So in our district they actually had a vocational school so you could go there you could learn tech you could do welding you could do nursing mm -hmm. so I ended up doing tech and I got my CompTIA A plus certification at 16. I got my computer science degree mm -hmm. did multiple internships while I was there and that really helped 
me get my first job with Raytheon. What advice do you have for others who want to get involved in this? The best advice is just to get started yeah. and then focus on the certifications that actually get you a skill. I have the CompTIA A, A+, plus, I have the CompTIA Security+, plus, and I have the AWS Cloud Certified Practitioner Cert. Mm -hmm. For your career, like what's going to help you out the most is once you get your foot in the door, mm -hmm. is really focus on job hopping. And that took my salary from 72000 to 225000 in three and a half years. Oh Boy, there are, there's like five different trades on site today, but who do they have? Freaking, freaking, taking out this, me. Don't worry, it's supposed to sound like that. You see? makes more than nurses um yeah radiation therapists actually do make more than nurses and we do way less work as far as nurses they do blood they clean up behind patients all that as a radiation therapist that is not your everyday life like you not clean up behind patients you're literally getting patients from the patient room taking them to treatment treating them and then having them go back change and you're done that's it so yes radiation therapists do make more than nurses that are just starting out i know nurses that have more certifications and stuff like that the more they get paid but as a radiation therapist you don't have to have a bunch of certifications and stuff to make more money you probably don't want to hear it but starting off as a corporate slave is probably the best way to get rich i'd like to be tagged into this conversation hand raised this creator is absolutely correct. Now, when it comes to corporate, I've always had two rules. The first being, if I have to be here anyway, I make it my business to make as much money as possible because I'd much rather be on a beach. The second is, if I'm not learning, I should be earning, always looking to do both. Listen, if you are strategic about your corporate career, it can literally be your path to financial stability. Strategic looks like working for an organization or in a role that would give you the acumen or the know-how to go out on your own. So as an example, if you want to be a real estate investor, maybe you should go work for a real estate investment company. That way you're being paid to learn. Strategic looks like targeting companies that maybe have a strong culture of development and are willing to upskill you or give you certifications um, and then using that to get into a better paying job with a bonus then taking that bonus and maybe buying a rental property every year for five years with your bonus or investing it in the market. 
strategic looks like targeting companies that offer equity, be that big tech companies, I know they're radioactive right now, or startups, and either hoarding that equity for retirement or using it to invest in other things. And more importantly, strategic looks like not staying in a low paying job that you hate. You are not a tree, you can move. Listen, success is not a zero sum game. This idea that we have to either work in corporate or be entrepreneurs is not real. You can do both. Use what you have to get where you want to go. If you are new here, I am a senior recruiter at a global entertainment company. I help corporate professionals to strategically navigate and accelerate their careers. Follow me if you want to learn more.